What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, and actually in the next couple of videos, what we're gonna do is graph a bunch of functions that contain absolute values. So a lot of it may be review, but you may run into some more complex functions. Maybe not in this video, maybe this one's kind of complex, something you haven't seen yet. But uh, in the next couple of videos, I'm going to have more complex functions dealing with absolute values that you've may never ran into, but it's going to be a great review of the fundamentals of how absolute value functions work. So starting with uh, number one, we got f of x equals 5 minus 2x. Now, what do absolute values do? They just basically ensure that everything is going to be positive. So if we end up having a positive value here, it just keeps it positive, but if we end up having a negative value in the absolute value, it turns it into a positive. So if we had like a absolute value of negative three, that would end up being a positive three. So one way to graph stuff like this is to actually graph just the five minus two X. So just the expression in the absolute value, you kind of forget about the absolute value initially. And so if we graph five minus two x, the way that would look is it's like negative two x plus five. So notice that the y-intercept is five, the b value. If we wanted to get the x-intercept, we'd have negative two x plus five equals zero, plug in zero for y. If we solve for x, we would end up getting five over two, right? Bring the negative two x over, divide both sides by two which would be 2.5, which would be like over here. So if we graph this line here, so this is at five, this is at uh, five over two or 2.5. Basically this line just looks like this, right? But if we add an absolute value, remember what is it doing? Taking any negatives, turning them into a positive. So notice that all of these, this whole portion of the line, it's all negative all the y values are negative. So if we plug in like um, any x value over 2.5, so like three, if we plug in three here, we'd get a y value of negative one. So then we'd have the absolute value of negative one, which has to turn to a positive one. So we take all of these negative y values and make them positive y values. So all we would do is we would take this area and reflect it, right? And on the x-axis, turning all those y values positive, and so we'd end up just getting that there. Okay, so five minus two X looks like this, but the absolute value of five minus two X, it looks like that. And this is at five over two, right? So that's one way to do it. You just graph what's within here, and then you just reflect any negative Y values to positive Y values by reflecting it in the uh, X axis. Now, a more proper way to do it, if you kind of want to show more algebra, is you can take an absolute value function and you could change it to a piecewise function. So what you can do is you could say, okay, if this five minus two X, if that whole expression is positive, then we're just gonna leave it as is. We're just gonna leave it as five minus two X. Right, but if that five minus two X is negative, if it's less than zero, then we gotta take that expression five minus two X and we gotta multiply it by a negative one. That would change it to a positive, right? And notice that we said when it's greater than zero, when it's less than zero, well, what if it's equal to zero? Well, then it's just gonna have a Y value of zero simply. And so we could simplify this here. Notice that uh, five minus two X, let's write it as negative two X plus five. Let's write in the Y equals MX plus B format. So negative two X plus five. And then what we would have to do is we'd have to isolate for this X here in this inequality. So we'd say five is greater than two X, meaning that five over two is greater than x, or x is less than five over two. So when x is less than five over two, the y values are gonna equal negative two x plus five. 
5 minus 2x equals 0. When you isolate for x there, you'd get x equals 5 over 2. Now, when x is equal to 5 over 2, you'd have 0. And then um, isolating for the x here, you'd end up getting, um, let's just do it actually. So we'd have 5 minus 2x is less than 0. 5 is less than 2x, so 5 over 2 is less than x, or x is greater than 5 over 2. So when x is greater than 5 over 2, it's going to be this function. If we distribute that negative inside the bracket, we'd end up getting 2x minus 5. So this you can represent as this piecewise function here. And so notice that this corresponds to this graph. Because notice when x is less than 5 over 2, so all of these x values, notice that it's the line negative 2x plus 5, which is this line. Notice when it's equal to 5 over 2, it's 0, has a y value 0. And when it's greater than 5 over 2, which is all of this, it's the line 2x minus 5, which is this line here. If we extend this line, it would end up having a y-intercept of negative 5. But remember, this is only defined for x values greater than 5 over 2. Right? So two different ways to get the graph of this. You can graph just the expression inside, flip all the negative y values to positive. You could also take this, change it to a piecewise function, and then graph that. What about the second function here? f of x equals the absolute value of x squared minus 4. So the first way, as I did before, you can just graph x squared minus 4, which is just the parent function x squared, the parabola, standard parabola, but it's shifted down by 4 units. So now the vertex, instead of being at 0 and 0, it's going to be at 0 and negative 4. So it looks like that. And if you want to be a little more specific, you could factor it. It's a difference of squares. So we know that what? There's an x intercept from these factors at negative 2 and positive 2. Basically, the x values that make the brackets equal to 0. So this is at positive 2, this is at negative 2. So this is the graph for x squared minus 4. But what if we have an absolute value now? Well, remember, we'd have to take any negative y values, flip them over. So notice all the negative y values are happening between negative 2 and positive 2. So we would just take this portion and flip it over. So it would end up looking like that. If I make a bigger graph, uh, let me actually just make it here again. Um, yeah, let's... So it looks like this initially. That's what x squared minus 4 looks like. This is at negative 2. This is at positive 2. And then the absolute value, we would just flip this, and it would become like that. So because this was at negative 4, this is now at positive 4 up here. And so we would just erase this portion. And so this is how the graph looks like of that absolute value function right there. Now, what if we take this function here and change it to a piecewise function? Kind of show it a little bit more algebraically. Well, it's going to be a little bit more complex than the previous one because we have a quadratic here, but it's still not going to be too bad. So what we can say is that this is equal to x squared minus 4, it's going to stay as x squared minus 4 when x squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Now, notice in the previous one I said greater than 0. This one I'm going to write greater than or equal to 0. We don't necessarily have to split up that 0 because if this is positive or this is 0, then the absolute value isn't going to change anything. The absolute value of 0 is just 0, and the absolute value of a positive number is still that same positive number. So if x squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0, it's just going to stay as x squared minus 4. You could also do the same thing for that other function we had, that um, 5 minus 2x. Remember how I had three pieces? 
Well, you can just have two if you want. You could just say five minus two x when five minus two x is greater than or equal to zero, and then negative five minus two x when five minus two x is less than zero. All right, you don't have to, but I just feel like with this one especially, it's gonna be easier to just keep it at two pieces than have three. So x squared minus four, it stays as x squared minus four if x squared minus four is greater than or equal to zero, but if that expression inside the absolute value is less than zero, if it's gonna be negative, then what do we do? We gotta take it, multiply it by negative one to change it to a positive. And so now all we have to do is we have to simplify these inequalities, which is gonna be a little bit more difficult than the linear um, function we had within the absolute value in the last example, but it still won't be too bad. So we've got to simplify these two. So first off, x squared minus 4, let's redraw it. Looks like this. We've got an x-intercept at negative 2 at positive 2. So when's x squared minus 4 going to be greater than or equal to 0? So notice that's going to happen in this area and then in that area. It's going to equal 0 at these points, and it's going to be greater than 0. It's going to be positive at this area and this area here. Right? When is it going to be above that x-axis? When are those y values going to be positive? So the answer to this inequality simplified is basically when x is less than or equal to negative 2 or when x is greater than or equal to positive 2. That's when x squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. When x is less than or equal to negative 2, when x is greater than or equal to positive 2. So we got these inequalities, and then when is x squared minus 4 less than 0? When is it negative? In that area right there. So when x is between negative 2 and positive 2, like that, right? And not inclusive of those because we didn't say less than or equal to 0. We just said when is it less than 0? When is it negative? It's going to be between these x values. So you could pick any x value in between negative 2 and positive 2, like 0. Notice if we plug in 0 here, we'll have a negative number. We'll have negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4 changes to positive 4. So here in this piecewise function, negative 4 multiplied by negative 1 changes it to a positive. Right, so what we got to do is we have to take these inequalities, change them to these inequalities. These are the simplified inequalities with x isolated. So notice we're going to take two pieces and make three pieces. So there, this is going to be a piecewise function with three pieces. That's why it's a little bit more complex, in my opinion. And you got to go in order. So the first one was x is less than or equal to negative 2. Then it was when x is between negative 2 and positive 2, and then when x is greater than or equal to positive 2. And these two were this simplified, so those stay as x squared minus 4. That stays as x squared minus 4. And then this was this simplified, which would be this function, negative bracket x squared minus 4. Taking that x squared minus 4, multiplying it by negative 1, and if we distribute, that negative inside, we'd end up with negative x squared plus 4. And notice that this piecewise function corresponds with this graph over here. Because notice when x is greater than or equal to negative, or uh, greater than or equal to positive 2 and less than or equal to negative 2, meaning this portion and this portion, it's the graph x squared minus 4. So x squared minus 4, how does it look? like that, so we got this piece and that piece there. But when x is between negative 2 and positive 2, it's the graph negative x squared plus 4, which is the x squared graph reflected because of this negative, so now it's going to be pointing downwards and then shifted up by 4, so it looks like this. But it's this function only between negative 2 and positive 2, so it's this portion which is this portion of the graph. All right, so multiple ways to do these. You can graph it, flip all the y values, or change it to a piecewise function and then graph that piecewise function looking at each interval separately.